Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video. So this is going to be the first video of a small series I'm working on. I'm building up my 2016 Yamaha Grizzly 700 to better suit my riding style and potentially enter a few GNCC races this year. If you don't know what GNCC is, check it out, it's awesome. GNCC stands for Grand National Cross Country, and as the name suggests, it's a series of cross country style races held all over the eastern part of the United States. I had an opportunity to do one last year with my Honda Rincon, and man did that thing take a hell of a beating, but I was able to complete the race. I didn't really do that great either, but I had an awesome time and I would really like to do more. In addition to the wheels, I have some suspension upgrades coming in, skid plates, as well as some engine performance parts that should really wake the Grizzly up. So today, I'm mounting a set of tires on some beadlock wheels, which I've never done before, and I thought this was going to be a fairly difficult, difficult task, but it was actually really easy. For my wheel choice, I went with a Raceline A71B Mamba with a black locking ring in a 12x7 size. I had a bit of a difficult time finding a decent set of 12 inch beadlock wheels. 14 seemed to be very common now, but I wanted to stick with the 12 inch wheel for weight purposes. It's also worth noting that the Can-Am Renegade XXC, which is basically built for GNCC, comes with a 12 inch beadlock wheel as opposed to the Outlander which has a 14. And that says something about a performance advantage, in my opinion. For tires, I picked up a set of ITP Terracross RTs, size 25 by 8 for the front and a 25 by 10 for the rear. The Grizzly has a set of 26 as stock, but for where I ride, which is mostly mountain trails on the east coast, I'll gladly give a few miles an hour on the top end for a little more punch out of the corners. The ITPs are a 6-ply tire, which is way more durable than my stock tires, and I believe this is also the factory installed tire on the Can-Am Renegade, which helped me make my decision. So as far as tools needed for the job, I'm using my impact driver just for the sake of speed and taking the lock rings apart, um, a half-inch socket, a 3 8 ratchet, and some sort of a lubricant to help slip the tire bead over the wheel. In my case, I'm using Spray 9 because it's just what I have. Um, but typically in a tire shop you'll find an animal fat based tire lubricant because it dries fast and it loses its lubricity once it's dry. If you use something like a dish soap or other cleaning solutions that stay slick for a while, it's possible for a tire to slip on the bead of the wheel which would be a huge safety issue, but these are beadlocks so I'm not really worried about that. Another thing to note, you absolutely do not want to put anything petroleum based like oil on the tire. Petroleum breaks down rubber which is why your health teacher in high school should have told you not to put Vaseline on your condoms because the condom will rip. <clears throat> so anyway, once you remove the locking ring, there's a lip machined into the wheel shown in green on this cutaway. This centers the bead of the tire and sits the bead at the proper depth for the locking ring which is shown in red to clamp it down properly. The tire bead sits in that gap between the locking ring and machined lip. In some cases, if the bead of the wheel is too thick, you may need to buy spacer rings that go under the locking ring in order to retain the proper depth of the bead so that the bolts don't get tensioned at a skewed angle. In my case, I didn't run into that issue, and this is a six-ply tire, so I'd imagine most tires would be fine, but maybe something like a really aggressive mud tire might have this problem. The tire was super easy to fit over the wheel, nothing special about that, other than taking note of the direction that you mount the tire on the wheel. My tires are non-directional, so for me it doesn't matter, but if you have a directional tire, you have to mirror them to each other so that you have a left and a right side. So once the tires are on, you put the locking ring on and get your bolts started. My rear tires were a little tricky because the tire is so much wider than the wheel. I had to push down pretty hard on the locking ring to get the bolts to start, but it really wasn't too much of a pain. Lastly, tighten the bolts down in a star pattern, alternating sides to slowly bring the locking ring down evenly, and the directions for these wheels say to torque them to 14 to 16 foot-pounds. I didn't have my torque wrench at the time of the video, so I did it with a ratchet, but I went back over with a torque wrench the following day. Well, that about finishes up the mounting of the tires. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you liked it, consider subscribing to get an update when I release the other videos, and thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.